Hi, and welcome back to Thai TV. I'm Daniel Bergman, and uh, today I thought we we're gonna tie the fly that probably had most water time during Perch Pro, more or less Stefan who fished them all the time. Uh, but this is a modified version of a quite old pattern called a crease fly. I used to know the history of the fly, but I don't anymore. Maybe I'm getting old. Uh, but this is a sort of a, a tweaked version uh, where I put a put a wave, wave, wave tail in the rear of it uh, to create a sort of a bigger silhouette than the regular ones. And also this helps a little bit like a, a rudder uh, on the fly. So when you twitch it hard, it sort of dives away towards the sides in a different manner to a regular crease fly. And the whole thing with a crease fly, except for the movement and the profile and the popping and all of that, is the crease you have in the foam if you look at it from the front. Uh, you actually have a hollow underneath uh, the body which allows air bubbles to pass through the fly as you uh, pull it through the water. And this creates of course a good uh, bubble pattern on the surface but also quite a lot of noise. So you have a really easy casting fly uh, that makes a lot of uh, noise in the water and uh, yeah, it seems as if uh, predatory species, especially perch uh, here in Scandinavia, um, probably asp as well, uh, tend to, to like this uh, quite, quite often more than a regular popper. Okay, so let's try the, uh, I call it the, uh, what was it again? The wave creaser. Okay, let's get going. For exact uh, material list, uh, just look in the show description. You can see all the materials I use. I'm of course gonna mention them anyway. Uh, this is a Attitude Streamer uh, 2.0 uh, from Partridge. I usually tie this in either 1.0 or 2.0. Uh, I think that's a, a good size when it comes to perch. You can tie them smaller or bigger uh, as well, of course. Okay, the hook is in the wise. And the first thing we're gonna do is uh, sort of build up a good foundation of thread uh, on the hook. And the thread you're using is quite, <laughs> doesn't really matter in this case. I'm using a, a power thread uh, just so I don't accidentally snap it. Uh, the important thing is that you sort of build up a good foundation for the foam and the glue to stick to. Uh, because the technique is quite important when, the com when it comes to this pattern. Uh, just that, that uh, part of the fly uh, when you're gonna get the foam to stick on the on the hook. So this is where you can fast forward. Maybe that's enough. Yeah, one more. Just make it rough and soak up the, the glue later on. Okay, awesomeness in a box. Next up is the wavetail. And this is uh, a, uh, doesn't really matter what kind of wavetail you use, but I, but I prefer using the ones with a foil, uh, like the colored ones or, or like this uh, white pearlescent ones. Uh, the skin versions uh, tend to tangle a little bit more. I'm gonna take measures uh, against the tangling anyway, but uh, yeah, just to, to make even more certain. And the technique I use uh, to tie in the wavetail in the rear is a classical technique called the pinch and loop, where you hold the, the tail uh, securely between your thumb and your uh, index finger. Uh, and you hold uh, the hook shank between your fingers and make sure that the tail is placed straight upon the hook. Then I thread my 
thread between uh, my fingers and around the tail. Make sure that the tail stays on top of the hook shank and then I pull hard down. And then I do the same thing once again and keep the tension on the thread. Pull down hard. And then you can do a couple of more turns. Hopefully this leaves the tail um, standing up on the hook shank in the same angle as the hook itself. So it doesn't go down on either side of the hook shank. And it did. <laughs> okay, then I take a couple of more turns just to make sure it stays there. And then I also secure it up with a little bit of super glue. Okay, some pike wants to take a little, little nibble. And then a uh, lesson we learned, uh, especially during Perch Pro when we did like one casillion casts and not all of them were on point. Uh, instead I'm gonna put some... Uh, no, we're gonna take the flex one of course. Sorry, I took the wrong bottle. We're gonna take some uh, flexible uh, UV resin. This one with the portrait of me is called Flexman. No, it's not me, but... Uh, from Gulf. And this, when it hardens, uh, it becomes flexible. Take a little drop there. And a bodkin. And then I sort of coat the base of the tail with the resin. Make sure it sort of binds a little bit with the hook shank. There we go. And then we're gonna set this baby. Wah! Here you can see that the tail actually is a little bit fluorescent as well. And this hardens the UV resin. And this will prevent the tail from fouling around the hook. That should be it. It's still soft, uh, it won't crack and holds the tail in the correct position all the time. Okay, uh, like the only tying material I'm gonna use on this fly is uh, uh, long hair holographic chenille in uh, pearlescent white. Let's see if I can find the right correct end of this. No. I can't. Then I just snip off a little bit. And I tie it in uh, on top of the base of the tail. Where and how is not that picky. We're gonna cover it in in uh, foam in a while anyway. And I do a few turns. Not that many, not that super tight, it doesn't need to be super much material. Like three turns or something, it's absolutely enough. I trim the excess, be gone with the... And I stroke the, all the fibers backwards and I sort of cover it up with some thread just to make sure that all the, all the fibers are pointing backwards. Okay, next up uh, can be a sort of a tricky thing. Um, so once you get it right, make sure to <laughs> repeat it. Okay, I'm gonna take a bear hook. Uh, and measure up the foam against. And 
And here we have uh, the foam, which is uh, like an oil slick coated uh, white foam. It's called Mother of Pearl. There's some uh, different color variations, but I think this is pretty cool. And what I do now is I put the foam on the table and place the hook on top of it. And I want the foam to extend uh, just to the end of the hook eye. And starting somewhere in the hook bend. Uh, just a little bit behind the barb. And then I just do a little mark in the foam. There we go. Then I make a cut as straight as possible. Now we're going to try to find out how high we want the fly to, ble to be. And that means uh, you need like two sides uh, or twice the, twice the length, twice the height of the fly you need to cut out in foam. I'm go actually going to use my long scissors here just to make it a little bit easier for me. There we go. I think that should be good. If I fold that. Ah, a little bit more. That should be it. Of course you can do this with with a ruler and uh, make super sure everything is perfect, but it's not really that picky. I don't know, maybe this is uh, I would like two, two, two times two centimeters or just above. <clears throat> Anyhow, what you do when you have this in the correct size First I check that it's the correct size. Yeah, that's pretty perfect, I would say. You do more of these. If you're gonna tie more flies, uh, use the first one you do and just copy it. Do a bunch of them. Uh, but I'm just gonna tie one this time. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll fold it in half And I'm gonna trim off just a little bit in the back, like a, I'm gonna trim off a triangle or a, yeah, a triangle in the back. That should do it. And that should be enough to sort of let the, let the tail do its magic down, down in the back there. Okay, now it's time for the tricky part. Uh, we're gonna cover the whole damn shank of the hook with glue. The tying part is now done, so I can sort of whip finish. And trim off the thread and get the bobbin out of here. I'm gonna take uh, super glue. Uh, this is Sapa Gap, it works really well for this purpose. We're gonna cover the whole shank, all the thread with glue. But you don't want to have too much glue. Because then you're probably gonna squeeze it out in between your fingers. And you will have a fly stuck between your fingers when you go to the emergency room. That's embarrassing. Okay, I take the foam now that the shank is covered in glue. And I place the foam so that it sort of just meets the other side on the underside of the hook. This is quite important. Uh, 
you need to get it in the right angle and make sure that the the foam binds together and also binds around the shank. It usually sticks quite easily. But just put a little bit of pressure on and make sure it's it's there. Then it uh, needs to dry a little bit. Um, what I do uh, when it has dried a little bit is you can see here that the eye of the hook is actually covered in foam uh, which can be sort of a problem when you're gonna tie it onto your leader. Uh, so what I'll do when there's hopefully, hopefully not much uh, moist glue in there, I just trim a little bit with my scissors in an angle so you easily can thread the leader from underneath and through the hook eye. And the thing is that you need the foam to be on the side of the hook eye because otherwise the it's a risk that the foam actually closes and you won't have the crease that actually is important for the whole fly. <laughs> so use the, use the hook eye as a sort of a rest for, for the foam. Okay, that should do it. When you feel that it's securely stuck in, in there, I'm gonna coat the bastard. Or first I'm gonna, gonna put on some eyes. I'm using, uh, you can use whatever eyes you want actually. Um, but I prefer using uh, this stick on ice for, for this one, uh, not to, to really build any extra bulk. Um, so I have like, I think these are around 5.1 or around 5 millimeters big. And fluorescent orange, or fluorescent red, I think. You have to check the description. I put some super glue. Uh, maybe a little bit too much. I need to be careful not to s get my fingers stuck on this one. I place it sort of... Ooh, that was close. I place it sort of in the center of the hook shank. Or, yeah, on the down part of the, of the foam. Just to give it, it sort of a whaley. It looks like a whale almost. Take the podkin, place it where I want it, and just give it a slight push. If you got too much glue, you can just get that out of there. Ah, that's not smart. Still, it's one way to do it. Okay, uh, to make this, this actually fishes it fish like it is, uh, but it's not gonna last for that long. Uh, so what I, I'm gonna do now is, is cover it with, with UV resin and I'm also gonna sort of add a even bigger uh, stri strike point uh, to the underneath of the fly uh, with, with some uh, fluorescent red uh, gulf. Ambulance it's called. And this also helps to, to sort of seal the, the crease on the underside uh, between the two foam sheets just to make sure it doesn't open up. Be a little bit careful when you apply it. Uh, it's more or less only cosmetical but I don't want it to bleed too much down on the sides of the fly. Try to get it a little bit symmetrical at least. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a little bit 
So she put the rest in. Put some more. Should be enough. Always use use the hook shank or the vise to sort of find support and more or less steady on hand. This is not super exciting to watch. But good side is that it actually cures super fast. So that's not boring to watch at least. You can see the more or less the whole thing is quite fluorescent. It's quite cool when you fish it that like uh, nightfall or early morning, it almost looks like it glows in the dark. It catches up with, with uh, even the slightest uh, sunlight. It glows. It's actually not perless or or uh, luminescent, but yeah, lights up pretty well. Okay, last part is to cover the whole thing up uh, with uh, Flexman just to make sure that this uh, nasty little perch doesn't puncture it and tear off the um, pearlescent film of the, of the foam. <coughs> and it also gives the flag quite a cool finish, real shiny nice finish. Now here you can be quite generous. Of course you add some weight to the fly with this, but not that much. And it's so light in total anyway, so you can easily cast this on a six weight. You can easily cast this on a five weight as well. <clears throat> as long as it's not too windy. Then I try to distribute the, the resin in an even layer around the entire foam body. Need some more. Whoa! Sloppy. Make sure to, to coat the eyes as well. That is also a weak point <laughs> that can tear off quite fast if you end up in a perch rally. Ah, that should be, that should be totally enough. Yeah, yeah, that's great. What I'm gonna do now is sort of just rotate the whole shebang in the wise a couple of times. Let it sit uh, like on the one side first, and I let it sit on the other side a little bit, then upside down a little bit. Then you can see if you had too much resin on in some place. Oh, but that looks quite good. Then I think we can cure this. We use the UV torch. It 
hardens quite fast, but I'm, I'm uh, quite thorough anyway because it's quite easy to sort of miss a spot. So it's better to spend like 15 extra seconds than to uh, put it in your fly box and it sort of sticks to everything else. And it doesn't just ruin this fly, it ruins all the other flies as well. Okay, that should be it. Here we have it. The Crease Cruiser. <laughs> which is more or less a fancy version of the crease fly. Works really well, try it out. And uh, if you wanna win this fly, uh, just uh, drop a comment down here, uh, maybe uh, where you wanna fish it or what you wanna catch with it. Um, this hook is good enough for salt water as well. Um, and make sure to follow Fly Dressing on Instagram and if you really want to, you can follow me as well, Antti Alt. Well, that's it for me. Cheers. See you later.